Hi, my name is Norm Hansen. I'm going to talk to you about the COVID-19 situation today. Self-isolation, stay-at-home type restrictions. They shouldn't stop you doing your art. In fact, doing art is the one way you can stay a bit healthier in uh, mind and soul. But it does make it hard for you to share your art with others and particularly collab collaborate with your friends and etc. So I have had a, a good look around the internet and there are literally thousands of articles and videos about social media, about photographing your art. They tend to be very technical and very lengthy and they're very much oriented towards young entrepreneurs who want to become celebrities or um, influencers. They're not a lot of help <laughs> to a, just a normal artist wanting to promote their work. What I've discovered is it's actually quite easy to share your work online. In actual fact, I don't think you need to get involved with the technology or the fancy gear. It's actually, it's actually quite simple to share your things online and make use of the technology that's around today. So I see there's a gap, something that's easy to follow without all the jargon and makes use of things that you've already got around your house or studio. I think we'll start with something that you should find if you've got a smartphone you're already well equipped to tackle a task. I'm sure you know how to take a selfie if you don't ask your kids or your grandkids. There's also a great camera on the other side of your phone and it's perfect to take pictures of your art. What I'm going to show now is a fantastic little app called Snapseed. Snapseed was developed by a company called Nick Software and became popular as a way to prepare photos for Instagram back around 2010-2011. Nick was bought up by Google in 2012. The software cost uh, $4.99 US at the time. Google didn't do a lot with the software but the Nick people updated it in 2015 and nothing's been done since then but it's still a fantastic bit of software. Snapseed is available for iPhone and iPad from the Apple Store and for Android phones and tablets from the Google Play Store. Did I mention that it's free? So I'm going to show you three bits of software on my phone. First of all, a camera in the red down the bottom corner, then my gallery and Snapseed, which is right up in the top, the little leaf icon. First of all, I have to take a photograph. Uh, just to get it to fit, I'm turning my phone over on the side. I'm deliberately taking a picture that's not in the right orientation. Um, there it is in my gallery and now I can go to Snapfish and uh, oops, it's <laughs> previous uh, picture, pick the picture I want and in Snapseed there's a series of tabs on the bottom. The first one styles and you can scroll through these. There's, they're just like the filters in Instagram or Facebook. They're artificial, um, don't use them. In the middle there's the tools and I'm going to use three of these, sorry, four of these tools to just fix up the photograph. The first one is to look at making the photo flat and for that I'm using the perspective tool. It's in the second row there. And the easiest tools to use are the tilts. So if you move your finger vertically up and down you can tilt 
the photograph backwards and forwards it's not too bad actually or alternatively if you move your finger horizontally you can adjust the rotation around a horizontal axis oh, I'm just going to return those I'm going to use the freeform um, uh, it's called free and you just grab the corners and stretch the image out to just get it as square as possible um, this is quite a good tool with a bit of practice you can get quite accurate you notice know, this grid lines on there to help you keep it square not doing so well here looks a bit better lift that up um, top right hand corner again and that's not too bad um, it's not perfect but it'll do for now so I click the tick sign down the bottom left corner and that will take me back to the main controls so I'll pick the tools again in the middle and the next thing to look at is color correction which in computer jargons called white balance and I've just mucking around with the auto setting there but you can do much better with the eyedropper so if you move that around the picture and pick something of a neutral color it will adjust the color colors accordingly so the tails nice and white it's probably the best place to pick for me wasn't too bad now I'll go on to um, tonal adjustments the key one normally is brightness your pictures are often a bit uh, grey it's not too bad the next one is add a bit of contrast so I'm moving my finger horizontally um, to the right to increase the contrast or to the left decreases it moving your finger vertically uh, adjusts this menu so saturation is something that often people get caught on moves up to 100% looks horrible um, I just strongly recommend you don't use the saturation slider always looks fake a much better tool is ambience so here I'm just lifting the ambience a little bit and you can fiddle with this for a fair while actually but it changes the intensity of the lower tones makes them just a little bit more intense and alters the local contrast so it's a much better tool to get the colors correct just remember that you've got your phone you got your picture you just took beside you so you can actually do quite a good job of matching the colors so happy with that and now the last thing we need to do is cropping so we're just going to pull the edges in to just inside my frame yeah, yeah that'll do <laughs> hit the tick mark again and now I've got a fairly good picture up the top there's a little set of um, stacked blocks with an, an arrow pointing down and these represent the different processes I did you notice I did um, two perspectives the first one I sort of ignored <laughs> so it doesn't matter when you um, do anything now all those processes will be done on the picture the original picture we stored there and it'll make a copy so here I've just uh, saved the picture which I could then email somewhere or alternatively most phones will have the share capability so you just click on share and that will again it's going to run through those processes and create a copy and now I can share that on anything that I've got set up on my phone so in this case it's I'm going to go to Facebook um, I'll, I'll choose to share it into the uh, watercolor group to watch me mucking around on with the typing get it right so I'm just writing a bit of text 
and this will be a new post in the watercolor group. Um, it's basically as easy as that. All done. I plan to make a few more short videos to help overcome the fear that technology is hard to learn. To let you master better ways to present your art. And in this strangely different world, but connected world to share it. So it's time to turn off YouTube or Facebook, go and download Snapseed and use it. See ya. Have fun.